This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 26, High School of the Dead. The Weekly Wish List. This week, there are some more titles I'd like spread over four different publishers. I like diversity in my manga. Kodansha releases Volume 30 of Fairy Tale. This is a series that is an automatic buy, even though I am already so many volumes behind. But when I want to binge read the series, I'll be ready. Seven Seas has a new title out, Dictatorial Grimore, a supernatural series that involves fairy tales. My love of both the supernatural and fairy tales means I have to have the first volume at least. Mobile Suit Gundam, The Origin, Volume 3, comes out this week from Vertical. I am a volume behind on this, but it's just sitting, waiting to be read, with this volume right next to it. Love me some Mecca. Hanakimi is a series I discovered through the 3-in-1 I got from Viz, so I'm keeping with that format. Volume 6 is out this week. Finally, Viz releases a new series this week, VoiceOver, Seiyu Academy, Volume 1. I've been waiting for this title since its announcement in February. I'll go into more about the title in the vizmanga.com update. Vertical announces new license at Anime Weekend Atlanta. Anime Weekend Atlanta is a regional con that gets a decent amount of guests and attendees. The publisher Vertical was at the con and had a new license to announce. Prophecy is a Shueisha title, a surprising catch for the boutique publisher, but that's what networking's all about, right? It follows the investigation by the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department Cybercrime Division into a criminal arsonist. Three volumes have been released so far, and the series just ended last month. I enjoy storylines about police investigations and procedurals, so this is a title I'm really looking forward to reading. Vizmanga.com update. Akira Toriyama's contribution to Weekly Shonen Jump's 45th anniversary, the series Jacko the Galactic Patrolman, ended in this week's Weekly Shonen Jump digital magazine. It ran for 12 chapters, which should be enough to get two volumes out of. Even though I didn't follow the series weekly, I'm looking forward to the collected volumes. I love Toriyama's work, and that it features cameos from some of Toriyama's other characters sounds awesome. We get a top 10 this week from Viz Manga. For the week of September 24th, 2013, Shoujo not only takes the majority, but also the top two slots of the list. Starting at number one is Demon Love Spell, Volume 4, still holding out for a third week. Right behind it is Skip Beat, Volume 4, at number two, which features a very different kind of demon. The first shonen is Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist, Volume 14, coming in at number three, and is followed by One Piece, Volume 68, at number four, falling one from the last list. Case Closed, Volume 43, finishes out the top five at number five. Naruto, Volume 62, continues its roller coaster ride as it returns this week at number six, while Beauty Pop, Volume 8, comes in at number seven. Basara, Volume 3, comes in at number eight, followed by Love Com, Volume 8, at number nine, and Mixed Vegetables, Volume 5, finishes the list and four volume run of Shoujo at number ten. I like it when Shoujo has a week like this where it controls the list and with such a wide variety of titles. But with this week being a heavy shonen release week, I know it won't last long. And seemingly to justify their recent price hike, Viz Media has made their manga available on the Kindle and Kindle app. How does this make up for the price hike, you may ask? Many of the prices for popular shonen and shoujo titles are about $5.50, making them lower than the new $6.99 price on the site. This is much more appealing for my checkbook, but I would hate having to split my titles between two apps. But Amazon gift cards are so convenient and so easily received as gifts. There is one new title to debut this week. VoiceOver Seiyu Academy is a title that was announced back in February, as I mentioned earlier. It is by Mari Minami, the creator of S.A., another shoujo series that Viz published but that I wasn't impressed with. VoiceOver is about Hime Kino, a girl who wants to be a voice actor like her hero Sakura Aoyama of the anime Lovely Blazers. She applies to and gets into the prestigious Holly Academy's voice acting program. Unfortunately, her voice is less than ideal for the part she wants to play. It is gravelly, and she is even given the nickname Gorilla Princess. But that won't keep our spunky girl down for long. She is determined to let nothing stand in her way. 
Bakuman and the J-manga title Koetama got me interested in titles about voice acting, so this one has me intrigued. Check out the first chapter preview. It has a great twist at the end. High School of the Dead, Volumes 4 through 7. Since October is the month of ghosts, ghouls, and all things scary, I'm going to concentrate on horror titles. What better way to start it off than with the zombie manga High School of the Dead? Well, actually, I can think of a lot of better ways, but I've had these volumes sitting in my pile for a while, and they fit the theme, so I'm going with them. I read the first three volumes and discussed them with fellow reviewer Alex Hoffman over at Manga Village. I wasn't highly impressed, but still curious enough to at least want to check out a volume or two more to see if anything improved. Quite the opposite happened, as it fell into a typical survival horror storyline complete with barricaded mall. That's required for zombie stories now, right? High School of the Dead is written by Daisuke Sato and illustrated by Shoji Sato. It is published by Yen Press and is rated M for Mature. It's a horror title, obviously, and retails for $13.99 each. After a short respite at Saya's parents' home, the kids prepare to continue their search for Takashi and Rei's parents. The arrival of Shindo and an EMP hit from a nuke exploding in the atmosphere ends the right-wing sanctuary and sends the kids out earlier than they intended. They make it to a barricaded mall and make plans again while dealing with the survivors in the mall and the inexperienced police officer, Asami, trying to keep them together. Kota has a bonding moment with Asami, which ends tragically, and they are off again, finally making it to the police station where Rei's father works. They find a message that leads them to the school where Takashi's mother works, but on the way they meet up with Rei's mother. When I read the first three volumes of High School of the Dead, I had a shred of hope that there would be some meaning behind the murder syndrome. Throughout the first three volumes, I thought internal monologues from Takeshi about the fall of society and the social and political ramifications from that fall might be an underlying theme as we watch these five high school students struggle to survive. I don't think I've been more wrong. Volume 4 is a return to the titillating scenes that dominated Volume 2, and it just keeps ramping up from there. There is barely a page that goes by that doesn't have a woman with size Z breasts nearly falling out of her shirt, soaked with water, or bouncing and nearly getting hit in the face with them. The pandering is cranked up to 11, and each successive volume only gets worse. It gets to the point of being so ridiculous that there is a scene where Alice's dog, Zeke, gets stuck in between Shizuka's breasts while Shizuka is looking for the dog. It's that Farsight cartoon in reverse. I knew things were getting bad when previous scenes had Shizuka's breasts resting on Alice's head, but that one with Zeke was really the last straw. Surprisingly, in between all the bouncing boobs, there were some emotional moments. Rei facing Shindo and finally explaining her pure hatred for him was a nice moment. I think there was an attempt to make Shido sympathetic with a quick explanation of how his life was shaped, but he came off as more pathetic. Rei's declaration that he isn't worth killing hurt him more than a bullet would. He's too much like a cockroach for me. Every time it seems like he's done for, he pops up again to make Rei and the rest of the kids' life hell. Saya's parents were pretty cool as they stood together fighting them off while Saya and her friends escaped. There were two actual emotional moments that should have had a stronger impact, but I had gone numb by them and really didn't care. Minami, a special forces sniper and friend of Shizuka, with her partner, continued to help out at the airport and go to try to burn them, but Minami's partner is bitten. He sacrifices himself to set off the tanker, which unfortunately proves ineffective against them. He and Minami had some good camaraderie. I was sorry to see him go. Then there was Asami, the police officer in the mall. She and Kota seem to hit it off, but she also ends up sacrificing herself to help them, and Kota is forced to shoot her before she becomes one of them. It is a traumatic moment for Kota, and he is shown reacting to it fairly realistically. But really, I stopped caring about these characters a couple of volumes ago. I really can't say the dynamics of the characters have grown and have changed just slightly from the first three volumes. I had originally thought this might become a harem, with all of the girls falling for unlikely hero Takashi, but it's become clear that it's going for a love triangle between Rei, Takashi, and Saeko, with Saya begrudgingly starting to admit she likes Kota. Rei is definitely becoming more jealous of Saeko anytime she's with Takashi. For her part, 
Saeko is more subtle as she confides into Takashi about her dark side and how happy she is that he treats her like a girl. She's not feeling jealous. Yet. High School of the Dead is a standard zombie survival horror title. It hits all of the elements you'd expect while trying to titillate the reader to come to a disturbing combination of death, violence, and sex. I wanted the female characters of the series to be able to stand on their own, but they are really just there for the male reader to drool over in between and during massacres. And they just had to throw in an attempted rape scene with Shizuka. I really can't recommend the series to anyone. The plot is thinner than rice paper, the characters border on annoying, and the zombie action is next to nil. I sat and read all four of these volumes during my lunch. With no problems. I give High School of the Dead, Volume 4 to 7, a collective 1 out of 5 stars. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at manga xanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.